Reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 6, entitled Dhyana Yoga, verse, verse number 17. Yuktara Viharasya Yukta Cheshtasya Karmasu Yukta Svapnava Bodhasya Yoga Bhavati Dukkaha Yukta Raviharasya Yukta Cheshtasya Karmasu Yukta Svapnava Bodhasya Yoga Bhavati Dukkaha Yukta Raviharasya Yukta Cheshtasya Karmasu Yukta Svapnava Bodhasya Yoga Bhavati Dukkaha Yukta Hara Vihara Syam Yukta Cheshta Sakarma Su Yukta Sakna Baboda Syam Yoga Bhavati Dukkha Yukta Hara Vihara Syam Yukta Cheshta Sakarma Su Yukta Svapna Vabodasya Yoga Bhavati Dukkaha Yukta Raviharasya Yukta Cheshta Sakarma Su Yukta Svapna Vabodasya Yoga Bhavati Dukkaha Yukta Hara Vihara Syam Yukta Cheshta Sakarma Su Yukta Swapna Vaboda Syam Yoga Bhavati Dukkaha Yukta Regulated Ahara Eating. Viharasya. Recreation. Yukta. Regulated. Cheshtasya. Of one who works for maintenance. Karmasu. In discharging duties. Yukta. Regulated. Svapnava Bodhasya. Sleep and wakefulness. Yoga ha. Practice of yoga. Bhavati. Becomes. Dukkha ha. Diminishing pains. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace. Abhay Charanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki. Translation. He who is regulated in his habits of eating, sleeping, recreation, and work can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. Purport. Extravagance in the matter of eating, sleeping, defending, and mating, which are demands of the body, can block advancement in the practice of yoga. As far as eating is concerned, it can be regulated only when one is practiced to take and accept prasadam, sanctified food. Lord Krishna is offered, according to the Bhagavad Gita 926, vegetables, flowers, fruits, grains, milk, etc. In this way, a person in Krishna consciousness becomes automatically trained not to accept the food not meant for human consumption or not in the category of goodness. As far as sleeping is concerned, a Krishna conscious person is always alert in the discharge of his duties in Krishna consciousness. 
and therefore any unnecessary time spent sleeping is considered a great loss. Advyarta Kalatvam, a Krishna conscious person, cannot bear to pass a moment of his life without being engaged in the service of the Lord. Therefore, his sleeping is kept to a minimum. His ideal in this respect is Srila Rupa Goswami, who was always engaged in the service of Krishna and who could not sleep more than two hours a day, and sometimes not even that. Thakur Haridas would not even accept prasadam nor even sleep for a moment without finishing his daily routine of chanting with his beads, 300,000 names. As far as work is concerned, a Krishna conscious person does not do anything which is not connected with Krishna's interest, and thus his work is always regulated and he is untainted by sense gratification. Since there is no question of sense gratification, there is no material leisure for a person in Krishna consciousness. And because he is regulated in all his work, speech, sleep, wakefulness, and all other bodily activities, there is no material misery for him. Om Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stavitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Sapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamanam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shta Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Shta He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchaka Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namunamaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shri Vasati Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare So in this verse, or in this chapter, Krishna is basically describing to Arjuna how to achieve perfection in yoga. In the previous verse, Krishna says that uh, one who wants to uh, become a yogi, there is no possibility for him becoming a yogi if he doesn't regulate his um, sleeping and eating. Mm. He has to eat enough and not too little. Not too much, not too little. And sleep, not too much, not too little. And, and then he says in this verse, yeah, actually, if 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 you are regulated in all these activities or all these demands of the body, then there is no question of, of material pains. Mm -hmm. And this is by practicing the yoga system, we naturally become, we naturally become regulated. Uh, because real yoga, yoga means to connect. And real yoga is to connect with the, with the Supreme Lord. Mm -hmm. So if we connect with the Supreme Lord, then there is no question of us not being regulated. Even if material body sometimes, uh, sometimes it demands from us certain things like sleep. Uh, but if we do it for Krishna's service, then that is also a regulation because we have to get rested in order to perform nicely, nice service for Krishna. In this verse, uh, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada gives an example of, of Srila Rupa Goswami. Yeah? We are all known as Rupanugas. Uh, Rupanugas means that we are the followers of Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Goswami, he slept only two hours a day, two hours a night. Sometimes not even that. But we cannot imitate Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami, he was so absorbed in serving 
service to Krishna and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that that he he could not sleep uh, this, this drive to serve Krishna from within was so strong that it did not allow him to sleep at all uh, and this is called absorption if we are absorbed in, in service to Krishna then we do not need to sleep. Huh? Sometimes we have this experience, if we are very absorbed in doing a certain activity, uh, we, we, are, we, uh, we love this activity so much. And you can see more of this um, in a child that plays with his toys. Mm -hmm. And sometimes then we don't even feel like we are hungry, you know, his mother calls him for, for, uh, for lunch and he didn't even think about eating. <laughs> he would just play all day outside, a small child. Or when it's time to go to sleep, it doesn't feel like going to sleep because there is so much fun. So in this way, absorbed in playing. Uh, but this is material absorption. Even material absorption is so strong that we don't feel like eating or sleeping. Uh, what to speak of being absorbed in Krishna? Uh, if we are absorbed in, in service to Krishna, then, then we just go on. <laughs> and then sometimes we forget our body. Uh, my spiritual master, His Holiness Kadambakana Swami, he gives an example of one of his uh, friends. He used to come, he, he used to run the Spanish farm. Maharaj, Kadambakana Swami, he, he used to run the Spanish farm. And, and then he would also, they would also have every year a Rathayatra in Madrid. And uh, I forgot the name of this, uh, of this sannyasi. He, but he was very much elderly already and he used to walk with a cane because he, his body was um, deteriorating and he could not walk properly anymore on his own. So he, he came for this Rata Yatra in Madrid and then it was his turn to lead the Kirtan. And in the beginning he starts leading Kirtan and he's still walking with the cane. But soon the cane disappeared and he was dancing and chanting in Kirtan very blissfully. And yeah, yeah so in this way we can see he, he, he got absorbed in, in the Holy Name so much that he forgot all about his physical pain and his, uh, his bodily limitations. Another example of course, we know from our previous acharyas is Jagannath Das Babaji, who when he was brought by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur to the birthplace of Lord Chichitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he was about a hundred something years old and he was being carried in a basket. He could not walk anymore on his own. But when he was brought to the yoga pit, the birthplace of Lord Chichitanya Mahaprabhu, he began to dance and chant in ecstasy as if he was a 20-year-old man. So in this, in this verse we see that all these material pains by, by the practicing of yoga system and regulating these uh, bodily needs in such a way, um, all the material pains will go away. And there is a very interesting point in this purport that Srila Prabhupada makes is that um, in this Krishna consciousness, there is no material leisure for a devotee and there is no question of sense gratification. So now we, we can ask ourselves, okay, there is no sense gratification, but how will I survive if there is no sense There is some sense gratification is needed, right? I mean, we can compare sense gratification to, to salt. In, when we cook, when we cook a feast, there needs to be some soul there, right? If there is no soul, the food is almost not edible. But if there is too much salt, also the food is not very much palatable. <laughs> so in this way, 
Sense gratification, we need a little bit of sense gratification. Hmm? So how is this? Prabhupada says, no sense gratification. Hmm? It is because, yeah, this material sense gratification will only bring us suffering. Hmm? There is no happiness in material sense gratification. Even if we, even if we regulate ourselves materially, yes, for some time we will have some sort of happiness, you know, we, we go to the gym, our body gets strong, uh, then we, for some time, we can enjoy our strong body, but eventually we will get old and our body will deteriorate to such a point where we can't do anything anymore, all right? So how long does this last? This sense so this material sense gratification also has an end and it, 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 eventually it brings us pain. But this not having any sense gratification means that this is all the sense gratification or all the needs of the body that we have to attend to are also meant for the service of, of Krishna. So in this way they become transcendental. So this is not actually, um, we are not practicing sense gratification for ourselves, but we are actually satisfying the senses of Krishna. And in this way, by watering the roots of the tree, we, we get all the necessary uh, happiness that we need in our lives. Yes. So, in this way, um, uh, regulation is very much needed. Sometimes we see some devotees in the beginning, they have a pure devotee syndrome. <laughs> no, I'll get up two o'clock in the morning, chant all my rounds before Mangalarati, before anybody else even wakes up. I already have all my rounds done. I read like two hours today, this, that, everything, you know. They pull the reins, you know, sometimes the mind is compared to a wild horse and we have to tame him. So they pull the reins of that horse of a mind very tight and they think okay now I'll just focus on Krishna consciousness by practicing Krishna consciousness all uh, happiness will come <laughs> I will bring my sense gratification to bare minimum you know sleep very little like Rupa Goswami <laughs> I will eat very little I'll just chant all day, I'll read all day, and maybe a little service if somebody asks me, but mostly just chanting, reading, and everything. But we are not pure devotees. <laughs> so after a while, the mind starts winning again. <laughs> and because, you know, the, the reins have been pulled on so tightly, the mind goes wild even more than before. So it is said that sometimes we have to let the reins a little bit loose. We can let the reins a little bit loose. And so this is this, is this regulation of not eating too much, not eating too little. But sometimes, you know, during the week, you don't get to eat so much, okay, then on Sunday feast you can, you can have. <laughs> it is allowed <laughs> to have as much prasad as you want. <laughs> so in this way you give the mind a little bit of a break, okay, we're not fanatic so much, okay, I can relax a little bit. <laughs> but then again, okay. If I continue doing this, then problems will come and then I cannot serve Krishna very nicely. So there has to be again some regulation. And the other day I, I saw a clip or a short short video of, of His Holiness Swami Bhagavan Keshav Swami. And he said that um, the, the, the pain, of, uh, there is some pain when we, we the discipline is very hard and it's also painful sometimes. But the, the, the pain of regret is unbearable. 
So if we don't have some discipline now, and if we don't um, sacrifice mm, something to achieve a certain goal or some or something like or serve Krishna very disciplined and, and taking care of our body, which is also service to Krishna, because our, this body is not ours. It's, uh, it's given to us by Krishna, and we have to take care of it. So if we don't take care of our body, then also later stages of our life, it's, it's going to be much more difficult for us um, to, to serve Krishna. And then mm, there can be regret also. You know, oh, if only in my younger days I uh, listened to my seniors and, you know, calm down a little bit here and there and listen to my limits of my body, then I could have gone, go on serving Krishna much longer. Yes, so in this way, um, even though now when we are young we think, okay, I can do whatever, whatever I want, I can push through, you know, not go to sleep for a kadashi, chant the whole night. And then in next morning, don't go to sleep either. <laughs> but, you know, how many times can you do that? Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, three times. <laughs> you did it three times. Yes. I don't know if I did it ever. <laughs> I just did. Maybe I tried once. I failed. <laughs> it was too difficult. Yes. But, you know, this Akadashi is a steer, but when there is Janmashtami, we are up the whole night anyway. Jayaji Vijay Guranga Doyal Nitaiki Jai. When there is Janmashtami, we don't care for eating or sleeping. We just go on having kirtan the whole night and it's blissful. Uh, we forget uh, about our needs. Mm? And this is because we put all our focus on Krishna. Mm? Of course, then when the kirtan is finished then prasadam comes and then again a whole feast and go sleep a few hours and up for Mangalarati for Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja again. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I like Janmashtami, especially with, with my spiritual master, because he always did a crazy kirtan on Janmashtami. It was always like three, three and a half hour kirtan, just going full on. And when you are hungry like that on, on Janmashtami, you either become really sleepy or your mind is like, when is going to be prasada? <laughs> but, but when there is like such a powerful kirtan, then you forget about this and you just chant Hare Krishna, you just go on and on and on. And then you look at your watch and it's half past midnight. And you realize you've been chanting for three hours straight. And it's been fantastic. <laughs> yes. So this is the beauty of Krishna consciousness. Um, that even sometimes we can go beyond our bodily limitations. But other times we have to be uh, careful. And uh, yeah. Here also it is said that we have to um, be, be, we have to have some recreation or, have, or, or which means some, some fun in our life also. And in Krishna consciousness we see we, we have the best fun. You know? Usually people, they cannot go without drinking alcohol. They, they have some fun afterwards. But mm, I was very, you know, growing up you see different things. I, I was born in Krishna consciousness. so. So I saw mostly mm, Hare Krishna parties. So this, this became normal for me. But then you see, then as you grow up, you also sometimes, you know, you go to some family meetings and all that. 
and you see people, you know, they're drinking and all that, and then after they become a little drunk, then they start having fun a little bit. <laughs> so I, I, then as I was observing like this, I, I realized, okay, so us, we devotees, we don't need to intoxicate ourselves, and we have so much more fun than the, than the non-devotees. And, and that, that, became, that was very impressive to me, actually. That w without any substance, without any you know, extra effort, we can have so much more fun and we can be absorbed for, for, um, for, forever. You know? like we can do 10-hour Kirtan Mela days, you know? for, for, or even in Vrindavan, we do 24-hour kirtan, and the bodies are absorbed fully in chanting and dancing. And we were just having a King's Day the other weekend. We did the King's Day Hainan, and then we took a break for prasadam. And then you uh, sort of, you know, when you're not fully engaged in Hainan Sankirtan, you sort of cool down and then you observe other people as well and then you see people going past us on a boat there was a, there was a canal right next to where we were taking prasadam and then there is people walking past us and um, you can see they're just searching for 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 the next hit of pleasure or the next party they're searching for the next party and the whole day they spend like this, drinking a little bit here, a little bit there, searching for a party here, there. But then I, 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 I was thinking, okay, but we devotees, we have eight hour party nonstop, you know, and we come through all these people and then they join us and they, they have the best time of their lives. Mm -hmm. Same thing in, we do a program in Australia called the Schoolies, Hainan program in Australia. And this is when the high school kids, they finish high, they finish high school and then um, they go party in a town called the Surfer's Paradise. It's, uh, the, the bigger city is called the Gold Coast, but this is like one of, the, one of the names of one of the beaches. It's called the Surfer's Paradise. And all the kids like 17, 18, 19, they come there to party for, for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So we, we come there with the, with the Harinam group and we just do Harinam for four hours every day, start like six o'clock. So just when they're starting to get into the party mode. And we do like intense kirtan because otherwise, you know, that they're having music there on the beach, like, you know, <laughs> Full drum and bass, <laughs> everything. So we do this intense kirtan for four hours, and, and, and all these kids actually they just come and they sing Hare Krishna with us. And sometimes they're so drunk they don't even know what they're doing, but they get into benefit. So then you know you do this whole uh, like nine days, seven nine days, and then you know this they are screaming Hare Krishna actually on top of their lungs. And it was interesting because like a month later in Sydney, I, I met some young people and they were showing me on the phone, oh, look, this was me on the picture that you, you were doing in, in schoolies. I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah, and, and we, see, we can see the difference here, you know. They try to satisfy their senses mm, by having fun in this material world, but all they get is misery. And that is described as, as trying to achieve happiness in the mode of ignorance. And this, this happiness actually, from the beginning to the end, is just suffering. They're suffering first because they're not happy. Then they're suffering, they're trying to find happiness and they're drinking. And uh, I don't know how it tastes, but I heard it tastes horrible. <laughs> Alcohol, never drink. And so, if something tastes horrible and you're suffering, 
and then they're suffering because they drank too much <laughs> and then sometimes they have to um, go for you know draining of the stomach and they take all kinds of drugs and many times they, they many kids sometimes they fall off the balcony and they die uh, and then there was one this year there was one boy that uh, 17 years old and he 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 came where we were doing the kirtan and he was watching us the whole time and he was dancing very ecstatically in the kirtan and then we went back to the it's called the bhakti center in in, in the gold coast and he went all the way back with us and then he was talking to one one of the brahmacharis his name is sadhu sachi prabhu and he told him that actually today I wanted to commit suicide. Today I wanted to end it all because this, it just doesn't make sense. You know, I've, I've come here to enjoy, but all I get is suffering. There is nothing mini meaningful in my life. But then I saw you guys, and this is the only thing that is meaningful in my life now. So he, he started to come every day to our, when we were doing the kirtan. And then gradually now he's, he's reading Prabhupada's books also, he's reading Bhagavad Gita, he's, he's very much enthusiastic. And he told Hainamananda, the one that he's from Australia, Hainamananda is from Australia, he's also here now. Um, he told him that he wants to join us next year on the front line. <laughs> and Hainamananda said, okay, if you want to join us on the front lines, then you have to come to the standard of chanting 16 rounds. So, so I, we, we, we will see what happens. But now he has some um, motivation, uh, motivation to start chanting 16 rounds and actually apply himself. He has become serious in his Krishna consciousness. So in this way we can see that this is actually what gives us purpose in life. Not going to work, coming back home, and just um, trying to satisfy our senses. Um, being under control of our mind and senses. Um, and as we know from Bhagavad Gita, the uncontrolled mind is our worst enemy. So if we, if we just try to enjoy in this world, we always get just misery. Um, there is a verse in Srimad Bhagavatam in the seventh canto by Prahlad Maharaj that says that people have taken up, I forgot the Sanskrit, but it's, I know the translation, it is that people have taken up a firm vow to only get happiness. They will do everything in life just to get happiness. And to avoid, to avoid all distress, right? That is, that is our nature. We want only happiness. But what they get is they get all, only misery and they don't get any happiness. <laughs> they get the opposite result because they want to enjoy. They want to be Krishna. They want to be God. And that is why we are here in this material world. Because we are envious of Krishna and we want to enjoy separately from him. So in this way, any type of satisfaction of our body and satisfaction of our mind and senses, uh, if it is not connected with Krishna, then it is um, destined to fail and it is, it is destined to bring us so much misery. But, you know, we are so mm, foolish. We think that, oh, now I figured it out. Now, just I have to do it like this and I'll be happy. But, you know, we, we, we get frustrated every single time. And, and why do we get frustrated? Is it because God is cruel? It, it is because God doesn't want us to enjoy, actually? If he brought us here, why can't we enjoy? 
No, it is because Krishna loves us so much. Krishna loves us so much that he put some sand in the sweet rice. Hmm? And the sand in the sweet rice is, is the frustration we get from trying to be the enjoyer, trying to be like Krishna. And then we can ask ourselves, what is going on? Why, why am I always suffering? What is the solution to this problem? <laughs> and then we can turn to Krishna. And then we can go back. Yes. So, and how do we turn to Krishna? And also here in this purport, Prabhupada says, we, we should offer everything to Krishna. Leaf, uh, flower, vegetables, um, water. And we offer it to Krishna. And Krishna tells us, how we should offer it. it. It is by offering it to him by and with love, actually. If we offer it to him by love, with love, then he will accept our offering and he will eat our offering. Ashnami Pratatma. So in this way, we can control also our tongue and we can eat only Krishna Prasadam. And Krishna Prasadam is the best. Of course, yesterday we had the Sunday feast, and today we had a morning breakfast. I ate so much, I couldn't eat lunch. <laughs> so Krishna Prasadam is so good. Sometimes you have to overeat, otherwise uh, your mind is just like, I want more. <laughs> so, but this is Krishna, actually. So by associating with Krishna, we get purified. And, and by offering everything to Krishna with love, we also turn to Krishna hmm, for everything. Hmm. Not even a moment, abhyarta kalatvam. Not even a, a moment we, ca uh, we cannot spend without serving Krishna. And in this way, by turning to Krishna, hmm, Krishna becomes very happy. Uh, Krishna becomes very satisfied. And he is, um, he is actually impatiently waiting for us to return to him um, so that he had so that he can have a loving relationship with us as well mm. yes in this way mm, service to krishna is actually a very ecstatic process but because our mind is still attached to trying to be the enjoyer um, we sometimes get tricked again and again and again and uh, we um, we kind of get distracted um, and Maya has the perfect tool now to distract us and it is always in our pocket <laughs> and it is called a smartphone <laughs> and the smartphone has the internet <laughs> and that is the net of Maya. <laughs> yes. And uh, sometimes we open our phone trying to check the weather, for example. And then we get, uh, we, we get a notification and we go down this rabbit hole of looking at these notifications. And then after half an hour, we forget why, why we open the phone, <laughs> for what reason we open the phone. And then we, oh yes, I wanted to take, check the weather. <laughs> but all of a sudden, half an hour is gone and spent for some maybe entertainment or, or some distraction. And we have been distracted for half an hour from Krishna, from Krishna's service. But if we mm, pray to Krishna sincerely that Okay, you know, we have these phones, but we also have to use these phones for your service. Otherwise, sometimes we become irrelevant for people. So we pray for Krishna, to, to Krishna to protect us. And Krishna will protect us. Krishna will not let us drown or let us be coiled up in this uh, net network of Maya. Yes, and in this, yeah, same way, we, we can connect also the phone to, 
Krishna. But this is a little bit more difficult and takes quite a lot of um, mental discipline also. Yes. <clears throat> and it can also destroy your sleeping schedule quite a lot. <laughs> and, and then, yes, then regulated sleeping, regulated eating, and all of that becomes a big problem. And we suffer a mangala arti. Oh, I want to go back to sleep. <laughs> Happened to me many times. <laughs> to admit yes so in this way there will be some struggle because this is the material world nothing is ever perfect but this struggle is actually purifying us and it will eventually it will awaken even if we are sincere and we are actually praying to Krishna to help us go through these struggles it um, it will bring us a more deeper desire mm, to actually get out of these mm, bad habits and also to get attached to Krishna. And once we are attached to Krishna, then we can just continue to chant and dance on the streets forever. <laughs> okay, I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Any comments, any questions, any corrections? Yes, yes, and he says we should not sleep more than six hours. Yes, it's true. It's much better than taking medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and actually Prabhupada says that people in this in, in one of the purports in the I think third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam he says that people they have you know this insomnia but it is only due to all this mental speculation that they are going on in their mind. They cannot sleep because of their mind always turning over some things, you know. But the devotee, you know, we, we, we learn how to, you know, kind of let go of our mind, you know, not take our mind so seriously, even though, you know, sometimes our mind is going crazy, even though we are devotees. But we say, okay, mind, it's okay. <laughs> let me sleep now. I'll deal with you in the morning. And then Japa time comes and the mind again starts <laughs> turning, churning. Yes, I was, um, the other day I was, um, I saw one video of Sachinandan Swami when he was quite young and he was explaining how, what happens to you when you chant extra rounds. Uh, and he was, uh, I think it was probably during Kartik and he was saying that first you start chanting your rounds, you go through your first 16 rounds and mind is very restless. And his mind is just wandering here and there. You're trying to bring the mind back. You're battling with your mind. And then you're finished with your first 16 rounds. And, and the mind says, okay, I have followed you this, this far. This is your quota. Now stop. You know, <laughs> you should stop now. This is, you've done what you have promised. It's enough. And then you say, no, my dear mind, it's Kartik. Extra rounds will be chanted. We have taken up this vrata, this vow. We'll chant more rounds. And then you enter another set of 16 rounds. And then, you know, the mind gets stirred, like in a, he says, like in a pot. It gets stirred and all these kind of um, sediments, you know, they come up and this, all these material attachments come up. You, you get confronted. Um, by, by attachments from this life, sometimes maybe from previous lives also. But then you just continue on chanting and chanting. And after a while, the mind starts cooperating. It becomes like a good librarian. It starts bringing you memories of, of, of your experiences with the devotees. 
um, some pictures of Krishna, of deities, or you start remembering past times, and like this. Um, and then he says, then you continue chanting, and you continue chanting, and he says, after a while, um, what is the next step? Um, oh, you, you become, you start chanting in a very prayerful mood uh, towards Radha and Krishna. And you, you, you beg them for, for some service. And then you chant more and more. This is basically chanting the whole day. You know? I don't know how many rounds you are on at this point. But he says that then if, if you're lucky and Krishna allows it, this step, the last step is not guaranteed because it depends on the mercy of Krishna. But at the, this last stage, you can actually start feeling the presence of Radha and Krishna and you feel yourself very, very insignificant in their presence, like a speck of dust. Like Lord Chaitanya also prays that he wants to be like a speck of dust at the feet of, of the Lord. Yeah, so in this way he, he explains the, the process of, of how, <laughs> what the mind goes through when you chant basically the whole day. Yeah, so, yeah, this is the, our battle with the mind. It can be won, even though it's more difficult to control the mind than to control the wind. But sometimes we just let the wind blow past us and then <laughs> we are, try to keep ourselves safe. Anything else, anybody? Okay, Grantara Chimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai Gora Premanande Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Thank you very much Jai Ramachi Prabhupada Ki Jai Patitanam Bhavani Yo Vaishnavi Yo
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate 